What's up, New Gun Nation? Troy here, and today I'm excited because we're going to start a new series called My Gun Shop Stop. Yeah, we're gonna check out local gun shops here in the Twin Cities and find out what makes them special. Check it out. New Gun Nation. Hey, New Gun Nation. Super stoked to be here at one of my favorite gun shops. My awesome. local gun shop. Arns and Arms, yeah. Arns and I was gonna say, pronounce it for me. Yeah, Arns and Arms. So yeah, we're here in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's probably the closest gun shop to my house. Cool, so, well, yeah. we're glad to be that for you. Yeah, it's, it's fun. Um, cool. So. I think I'm going to call the series um, My Gun Shop Stop. Okay. Or something like something that. Like I, might, that. I might hit other shops too. Cool, you should. Um, but uh, you were the first one to say, come on in. Absolutely. Well, actually, it was funny enough, you reminded me of me like eight, nine years ago when I started. I wandered in here with a camera. This is when the Shield just came out, the Smith & Wesson Shield. Yeah. And I was like, I need a single stack nine. And the guy, Andre, behind the counter just let me do my thing. That's why I was like, hey, you got to come in. Just yeah, me. that's <laughs> the one thing. I mean, what I'm finding doing this channel is that yeah. actually putting my hands on guns or even talking to people. And, For sure. Uh, a lot of it I shoot in a studio where I don't really even, even show guns. Yep, yep. So it's cool to be in a place where you can actually see them. We well, sort of started your station at the end of the world, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it's the timing couldn't be any more, uh, yeah, yeah, more proper. But uh, um, cool. So you guys, how long have you been in business here? So this is our ninth season. Okay. Um, we missed our eighth anniversary, unfortunately, because of COVID. Um, so snapshot in time, it's 2021 spring, right? So if you, you know... If it's the future, welcome to the future. Um, but also, just to give you a sense that in the last year we've had COVID nineteen, civil unrest, all that you know, yeah. all that stuff going on in, in new administrations. It's been a nutty time in the gun industry, to say the least. Yes. Um, so we start the company started eight years ago. So Dan and Kate, Dan um, and Kate worked together in um, IT for like super colliders or something crazy, like a semiconductor, something like smarter than I'll ever be. Brainiacs. Yep. Totally. And Kate was the firearms enthusiast. Okay. And when they decided to start a business, the two things that came into mind. One was, you know, the internet was booming at the time, and so um, gun shops are somewhat impervious to internet sales because you still have to transfer the firearm. So you're right, you need you're gonna, FFL. You're going to need a fi federal firearms license, so yep. um, you're going to need brick and mortar at some point, right? Right. So that was smart. And then the other thing was, Kate would go into these stores. In those days, the gun shops weren't pretty like this. This is a beautiful <laughs> facility. I mean, you see. I can think of a couple that aren't as pretty it's as this. 100%. We have it in our town, and they serve their function. And I certainly still love the old man story hour uh, gun shop, right? Sure. But um, she would go in and ask questions at the counter, and they'd answer Dan, who's like over here looking at the Uncle Mike's, you know, right. display. Right. So totally or blowing off. Just blowing her but, off. Because she's a female. Because she's a woman, yeah. yeah. So they decided to start this place, which is awesome. The ethos here has always been. Couple things. One is everybody here shoots a ton, right? And also, you know, we respect everybody. Cool. And then, then it was, then it was like, how do you build a well lit and friendly experience for people to buy guns? Which, you know, in the last year, we've seen a lot of people making this existential choice. I mean, literally, the existence of their life choice to arm themselves for the first time in their home or in their life or wherever they are. Right. And um, and how do you provide a safe and comfortable place for them to do that? Of all races and genders to come and like really get their hands on guns and and so one of the early choices we made was to be ultimately non-political yeah so we um you know we're obviously because what we do for a living um there's politics involved with firearms sure with but the laws we don't, but everything else we stay the hell out of yes right? i like it and that lets everybody be free to have their choice and their decisions and their yeah. you know also i think we're, we're good libertarians at the end of the day as it relates to that sure right? well yeah. i mean everyone the Second Amendment is for everyone. Yeah. Right? All for 100%, Americans. 100%. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, God made man and Sam Colt made him equal, right? <laughs> and so um, so that was sort of the beginning of this place, and it was like 20 guns and then 30 guns and then 100 guns, and I've been here since about seven years. Yep. So, I, again, I came in here about eight years ago with a camera, and then I offered to do some work, and I kind of made my way through the process. You're like this media guy, right? Yeah. I, the... my, my title around here doesn't really matter, but what I do is, is I manage the online sales. So all of the okay. digital output that comes out of here uh, comes from my office, right? How much of your sales are online versus like people coming uh, in the store? These days, it's around 30% are, are national. Okay. So 70% in the shop, 30% national, and we've just been growing it slowly but surely. America has seemed to wake up to the fact that you can buy guns online. Now, it's not like what they tell you it's like. Right. But it still requires an FFL. But one of the... I don't think you'll know this. This is not like Amazon where it's like the thing you want's there and you press a button here and then it ships to you. Right. It's not like that in our system. So what the way it works is distribution 
buys guns from manufacturing. Yep. Distribution allocates those guns, not on a first-come, first-served basis, but on an allocation basis right. to the stores. Based on, like, tier system or... Uh, I don't I mean, think it's that simple. Okay. I think it's more like it's Friday, and I think it's an A day, so let's do R and Z. But, it, right. you know, you build relationships, and, of course, we have more buying power than most places. We're a fairly sizable company. Right, the point. volume that you're selling. Yeah, for, yeah. 100%. So it's a, it's a little weird right now, but generally speaking, there's enough guns in the system. So Sig Sauer doesn't know that 500,000 365s are sold to the public. They only know that 500,000 365s have gone to distribution. Okay. And distribution knows that 500,000 have gone to retail. But they have no idea how many actually are on the street. So if I just decide to buy 500,000 of these, the assumption from SIG would be they're in the marketplace, and they're not. So there is no vertical visibility whatsoever. And some of this is related to, like, you and I want some privacy at the end result, you know? Yep. So there's some other – there's some factors in here, but – Generally speaking, what they do is they just make more enough. There's enough supply in the system for the demand, and the assumption all the way up is well, if, if distribution is buying 500,000 more, then there's you know those first 500,000 are gone. Right, they're in the market somewhere, but no one knows where they are. Okay, <laughs> right. So, really, what happens in the in the system then is, is as far as distribution goes, is they buy all these guns in, in, in mass, and we're sending purchase orders in hoping to get our allotment of them and under normal circumstances you know if I send that in a week later two weeks later I'm going to get X number of guns and, and my PO's filled and we're good to go what's happening right now is, is that's not working that's broken and so if you call me up and said hey can you get me this I'm going to say yes and you're going to say immediately how much yep. and I'm going to tell you how much yeah, yeah. and how long right. and I'm going to say days weeks months or a year right because it could come tomorrow Yep. and I really won't know until I open the box and it's super frustrating for you guys, but I'll tell you, it's super frustrating for us because we're none of us like this. Right. And what I tell people is the only unacceptable outcome for me is that I have your money and you're mad. I'll, I'll take your money and you get the gun. You know, I'll not take your money and you don't get the gun. But what I do not want is to be holding your cash. It's a liability for us, right? I mean, all any of these 20% deposits we're taking, we're not spending that money. It's just sitting in an account. We can't do anything with right. it. Right, you can't use it. And, yeah. You know, because there's a good chance, not a good chance, there's a possibility right. that a gun isn't ever going to get here, right? Sure. So that's kind of how it, it looks right now. And the person it's, could change their mind or whatever. 100%. Yeah. So, and, and that's the way we're handling it is just saying, if we think we can get it, we'll take a small refundable deposit and then... Just be patient. So, and we, we talked about this a little before is like that wants versus needs thing. Yeah, I want to get into that. Yeah, for sure. Because there's different strategies for how to find things right now. Sure. Yep. Yeah, because we talked about okay, if a person comes in the door and they go, I want this, is I want the shadow, I want yep. all this yep. stuff, yep. versus I just want. You know, give me a, a, a gun that works. Yeah, hundred percent. So talk about wants and needs. And yeah, good. Them. So I'll just set up the classic scenario right now, right? Someone walks in the door and they say, "I want a Glock 19." My brother's a cop, and he told me that's the gun to get. Yeah, right. And that is, a, like, I think I hear that ten times a day, right? And the Glock 19 is an awesome firearm. It just isn't the only one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what we rec look, you want to look at this really simply. You break it down. What do you need versus wants? If you own a bunch of guns. And this is just another one you want on the list. That's a want, right? Yep. Put 20% down somewhere, get on a list, and then keep looking for it. Yeah. And then, like the way our, we're set up, if you find it, call us. We'll just refund your money. It takes a few days right now. That's life, you know, especially if it's seasons for a month or two. Right? Sure. And, um, and then you're good to go. If you need something, you live in a city or whatever, you just you finally made that existential choice we talked about earlier right. to, to arm yourself. You ask around, your, your brother the cop, your cousin the cop, or your, your, your gun guy just says, get a Glock 19. You come in here and you ask for one. We might, you know, it really depends on the day. Some days we got a bunch of Glocks, some days it's a bunch of SIGs. And so what we tell people is, look, the Glock 19 is a wonderful gun, but there are like... Smith and Wesson and Sig Sauer and Springfield all make, you know, and CZ I'll throw in there now too, all make a wonderful striker fire compact pistol. Right. So maybe you just be flexible. And in within those, so that's like Ford, Chevy, uh, that, know, Well, that, exactly, 100%. You yeah. got the Civic, which a lot of people yeah. say the Glock is like yeah. the Civic. It'll yeah. run. It'll run. And it's you great can good. get a lot of aftermarket parts for it. Right there, right boom. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. If you're buying a, a major brand, yep. you're going to find holsters, you're going to find extra magazines, things like that. If you decide to buy a Fiat, right, you, right. you get, you know, let's say, CZ P10. Is that a high point? What is <laughs> right. No, no. no. <laughs> if, you buy, if you buy, like, a CZ P10, for example, yeah. they're not as well supported, okay. right? If you go even further and you buy, like, 
like a, you know one of those like Hudson nines that was out. You're, you know, no one's made a holster for that yet, right? right. right. So don't go, don't be a contrarian. That doesn't help. But right. stick with the big. Brands. I want to be unique. Nobody else has this. And there's gun. nothing wrong with being unique, but you got to get that comes with that comes with different a different skill set. Finding the stuff you need. Keep it simple. This is your first gun. It's your first defensive handgun. Yep. Buy Chevy. Buy Ford. Right. Yep. Don't don't go off the reservation. And get all weird. Right. So. But if you come in here looking for that Glock 19 and I've got a 320 compact, that is apples to apples. Right. They're both awesome guns. They're both roughly the same price. They both do roughly the same thing. The, the battery of arms on them is almost identical. You might even like the SIG better, you know? I mean, I don't know. But the point is, is you don't really get to choose right now. Now, it is getting better. I pulled some numbers and I, and I called some other retail in kind of advance of this meeting. So this is sort of like an aggregate number. This is an Arnzins, but we got down to about like 20% of inventory at one point. Wow. You know, so if we normally have 100 guns, we had 20, you know. And we're back to maybe, call it 50% if you're a good, if you've done a good job of buying, because that's really the whole game right now, is who's, sure. who's doing your buying. Yep. Um, we got back to we're about 50%, but a lot of that's duplicates, right? So it isn't as broad as it would normally be. So sure. what it looks like is, is some companies, Springfield is a great example of this, yep. have kicked ass at the end of the world. <laughs> that's like the jokingly yeah. call it. Um, HK yeah. has failed. Okay. Six Hour has been on the failure side. Yeah. Well, they have a big military contract well, too, right? They, so they, these guys all have their priorities. That's right. what you want to get. You're, right. You might not be at the top of that list, right? But, but I may or may not have a 320 compact on order. I got it. Not from you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Because I. I yeah, the X but, series or is it? Just, uh, yeah, it's X. Yeah, 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 yeah with the gonna, Romeo yeah, on it yeah. for for Mama. Okay, good. Miss Miss Gun Nation. Perfect, New Gun Nation. perfect. And here's and, and it's before Christmas, and we're still waiting for it. Yeah, you probably are three to four months for that. Yeah. So here's a strategy to just let you know. Yeah. So as we're looking at how you find the thing you want, if you've got to have it and you don't want to do what I just told you, which is put money down. Yeah. First thing to do is anything that includes accessories like red dot. Yep. Get rid of it. Really. Yeah, if you it. want to speed the process up. Yep. Because I got the red dots on the shelf. Right. And you're going to save maybe 20 bucks buying the package. Right. Let's look at the concept here, right? So if I've got, I'm, I'm behind on SIG 320X carries. Yep. I'm months behind on them. And um, what am I going to make? The ones that require the red dot and ship them out? Or am I going to do the ones that don't? Right. Right? They're going to do the ones that don't. That's why you're seeing 9 millimeter guns flooding the marketplace and you can't find a 40 or a 45 to save your life right, right now. Because 9 is 90%. I would remove the red dot. I would get anything out of the way that could hold it up. Okay. So like M&P Sport 2s, for example, they make that thing. It's, it's an, an AR-15. AR yep. They make it in a million variations, right? Sure. And a lot of those have like a foregrip and a red dot on them or whatever. And, right. and you are saving some money doing that. You're also needing Crimson Trace to have the red dot in stock, mm -hmm. and you're also needing Magpul to have the, the, the Got it. foregrip in so stock. So lose some of the features. So, it, well, it, it, everything you add to the thing, it, anything outside of the, the base model right. is going to be the is not going to go first. Now, we're fast forward nine months from the beginning of the epicenter of this. And, you know, really May June is when it went from crazy to totally nuts. Right. right. That's that would, when I that jumped would be in. the riots happened yeah. in the United States, um, and we're in Minnesota, so. We got it pretty good and strong here. Yeah. Um, you know, the we're starting to see more of, like, the, the rifles, the core ones that have the extra toys on them are starting to show up. But for a long time there, and this was, like, the killer. Everybody wanted the MMP Sport because they know Smith & Wesson, but yep. Springfield Saints were rolling in here like crazy. This yeah. is why I say Springfield crushed it. Yeah. And maybe they didn't have the demand. Maybe they had more guns on hand. I don't know the story, but when we had nothing, like... 50 boxes from Springfield would show up and we were just like this is freaking awesome right? right so we you know we had two towers filled with their handguns you know rack of Springfield Saints in the back yeah and um, and, those, and frankly when this thing's over with you know Springfield is going to become Chevy when maybe they were Toyota before you know yeah in 2017 they had a little bit of a rough run they had like, some, some stuff significantly rough run and yeah. there were some people saying yeah I'm sending my gun back I don't support this company anymore mm -hmm. so they've made quite a comeback absolutely our first pistol was an XDM yeah at least. so and so Love many it. people, yeah. And look, uh, Springfield handguns, I'm just on that topic for a second, are probably one of the best out-of-the-box striker fire pistols you can get your hands on. There's just nothing really you can do to them after that. Right. And a lot of us are, you know, geeks, right? And yeah. so you buy a Glock because you can just 
mod the thing to the, your, yeah, yeah. your heart's desire. Yeah, they don't, like the one we bought doesn't have an op, it's not optics ready. Yeah. Even. Yep. So it's like, oh, shoot, and that's kind of why we're looking at the 320. Oh, yeah. No, like, it, hey, we yeah. put a. No, I shoot the X full um, in the tactical games, and I've just recently put a red dot. I, I'm, I'm actually a, a fan of their striker fire pistols. I like them. Sure. Okay, so maybe a closing word for, yeah. the, for the new gun nation. What what advice would you give them? Somebody considering. Yep. Good. Um, so first thing is just figure out your intended function. What are you doing with a firearm? Are we putting holes in paper? Are we putting expensive holes in paper? Are we defending our home? Are we going to carry this gun? Yep. Blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's just... It's a very hard thing to do, but let's just say you're going to buy one gun for all that. It's probably a handgun. Yep. Okay? And I would highly recommend you get a full-size gun. So in, in, the, in the world of Ford, Chevy, you know, whatever, it's a Glock 17, a Sig 320... Um, or the X-Full, or from Springfield, the XDM series, all those guns. I would not get a middle-sized gun like a Glock 19. I'd buy a full-size pistol, and I would learn how to shoot. Right. It is far easier to learn how to shoot on a full-size gun, and then those skills translate to smaller guns. You just want to get that everything from full-size down is a concession, right? So the smaller it gets, the, the less surface area you have to grip, the, the skinnier the transfer of energy is, right? So instead of a fat grip, you got a little skinny thing, and it's, it's the same, you know, it's more energy going into a smaller point. Right, right. Um, you know, it leverage is, is, isn't as good because it's not as long a grip. Right. So learn how to shoot on Accuracy, full Accuracy, even, like the barrel length? 100%. Everything is easier. Everything is easier. And then once you get good at that platform, that can become your go-to-the-range gun or your nightstand pistol, something you're not going to carry. And then go out and buy, because you're going to end up with two guns anyway. I promise you are. I'll tell you that formula in a second. And then, then get yourself something you're actually going to carry. If you're, like, I'm a 155-pound, 5'10 guy. Like, they make Ford seats for me, you know. Um, I don't have a whole lot of real estate here. I carry a single-stack 9mm, like your Hellcat. Mine's a 365. It makes perfect sense, right? So... Because most of what happens is people come in, they buy a Glock 19, which is not really good for either of those jobs. It's kind of right in the middle. Right. And the, yes, you can learn to shoot well on a Glock 19. Do not get me wrong. You're, don't crucify me in the comments. <laughs> right. But but it is not as easy as a Glock 17. It's okay. you're, you've made a concession at that point. And if you've never carried a firearm before, first of all, you are going to assume everybody knows you have a gun. It weighs a couple of pounds loaded, right, on your belt, and usually in an uncomfortable place so you can get to it easily. It's either going to be appendix style up front like this, or it's going to be right behind your hip bone, which is where you sit when you get in your car, right. or you sit down at the church pew and it's like, dunk. Right. And but you're going to assume everybody's staring at your crotch all day, like you've got a you know. Yeah, my eyes are up here. here. Yeah, my exactly. eyes are up here. I'm up here. I'm up here. <laughs> and but that is, you know, it's a thing to carry a gun all day. Mm -hmm. And so you know, you, it requires a good belt, a good holster, and all. Yeah, this your stuff wardrobe can change. Can change. Yeah, hundred percent. Mine has. So I highly recommend though, you just get a full size gun, learn to shoot, then you pick out the appropriate smaller gun instead of trying to find this one gun to do it all because there's no such thing. Yep. And in most cases, you're going to need a permit from your city. Yep. Through your sheriff's department, yep. Yep. which uh, where I live, it was free. Yep. Uh, we did we did everything online, but they made us come in and drop it off. But this is like last yeah. year. so Yeah, no, and that could change a little given the times. But yep. if you're looking for your permit, you need a permit in Minnesota to buy a handgun, uh, a modern sporting rifle, or a couple of other things. But those are the main ones. But... Um, Real easy. Your permit to purchase is free in Minnesota, okay. and you get that from your local PD. Um, most of them are doing it online now. It takes seven to ten days, zero cost. Yep, they send it to the, in the mail, and then you have a year of purchasing. Correct. Uh, yep. Yeah, purchasing a pistol. If you want your carry permit, which is one of these guys. Um, if you want your carry permit, those cost a hundred bucks. You will have to take a class for this. That's probably a hundred bucks, give or take. Yep, or and more. Yep, it could be more. Yep. And then you'll send that. You'll go down to your sheriff, and you'll need to make an appointment at the big sheriff's, like Hennepin. You got to make an appointment. It could be months. By yeah, we took we took our class in October. Yep. We got downtown end of January. Yeah. That's and we had to go downtown, good. which is not exactly where I wanted to go. No, anyway. no, you got to go down. So, yep. but they have opened up other substations. They now, have. So. And that's, that's cost you a couple hundred bucks. It takes about 30 days once you have the class done to get that, to get that in. Once you, or once you've had your appointment, you go in. Right. Um, I recommend getting your carry permit. It gives you some extra freedoms. Um, like you can travel with a loaded gun for one. You can keep your ammo and your guns together in the car. Yeah, even going to the range is simpler for it's us. Every, everything is just a little easier, and it lasts five years, so you don't have to renew every year. The thing that's cool about the class, too, is you really, for me, I wasn't sure if I was going to carry. I just knew I wanted some of those freedoms you were talking yeah, about. Yeah. But once I took the class yep. and I started really thinking about yep. stuff, 
I made the decision that I was going to carry. Yep. For sure. 100%. So, and then my wife, Amy, does not carry. And that's no. her choice. My, but we're both My carrying. girlfriend's got her permit. She's not even into guns, but I am. And she's in my truck. Yeah. Right? Right. So, but the one last thing is, is let's just be really, really honest, okay? 99.95% of the time, this whole conversation we just had about the defensive side of guns is never going to happen. So get a gun for fun. Because ultimately, this is a really fun time, and for most of us, we will never deploy a gun in a lethal situation. Yeah. And so, don't buy for that. Buy for the fun of it, and then have the tool if you need it. That's a good word. Well, you will have way better time with life. And get rid of all the stress of all this. It's not that stressful. Just come in and hang out with us. We'll find you the right gun, no problem. And then... For the love of God, go have some fun with it. Shoot it up. Shoot it up. Have some fun. All right, guys. Hey, appreciate you. Yeah, it's good to meet you all. Blessings. Yeah, bye. Man, that was awesome. I really appreciate Mark and the whole crew down there at Arms and Arms. Whether you're looking for your first gun or your 10th gun, they're definitely a place to check out. I'm going to leave a link down below for their YouTube channel, which is very cool. And I think what we learned today is that there's a big difference between wants and needs when it comes to our first firearm. Be safe out there, and I'll see you next time, New Gun Nation. Boom! New Gun Nation. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share this video with somebody that could use it.